you ever wondered what you can do to increase the probability that you get an interview in data science? I've worked as a data scientist, and currently I've interviewed a lot of data scientists for new roles. I've started to create a framework for what I really like to see in a candidate and what really stands out to me. In this video, I've created a step-by-step -step guide to help you improve your chances of getting a foot in the door. I would have really have liked to know many of these things when I was applying for new opportunities as well. This is based off of a Medium article that I wrote that goes into far more depth about each of these individual steps. If you enjoy this content, please like, and if you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. The first step that I recommend is introspective. Looking and understanding what skills that you're good at, what skills that you need improvement on, and what opportunities you'd like to pursue. Based on what opportunities you'd like to pursue, you can figure out if you need to enhance your skill set in a couple different areas. For example, if you have an opportunity that is very interested in computer vision as a specialization in that role, and you don't particularly have too much computer vision experience, I would recommend looking into doing a project or enhancing that knowledge so you can talk about it intelligently and you can show some of the work that you've done. Another important question related to this is, would you like to relocate for work? There's more data science opportunities on the West Coast uh, than in a lot of other cities. So if you want to maximize your potential, potentially looking there could be a good idea. If you'd like to stay where you are, and it's not a major metropolitan city, you may consider that you have to take somewhat of a pay cut compared to those other locations, and the opportunities in specific fields might not necessarily be accessible to you. After doing some introspection and understanding yourself and your opportunities further, the second step in this process is to focus on content creation. If you've already created content, great. If you have a GitHub, if you've done Kaggle competitions, you should find a way to showcase that as well as clean it up and make it presentable to outside viewers. Start filling out your portfolio with projects that highlight specific skills that are important to the employers that you're pursuing. If I see a resume that has a link to a personal website, a GitHub, a Kaggle, a Tableau public profile, a YouTube, or a blog presence, I'm always very impressed. If someone has two of those things, I generally consider them as candidates unless there is some you know, really bad spelling or the work is very poorly curated. I can't stress this enough. This is the number one differentiator for me. If I see someone that has really good content, I expect that they can create this content for my company as well. Step three is all about creating your different forms of resumes. The first type of resume is your traditional you know, paper resume. The second is your digital resume, your LinkedIn profile. My first advice here is to make sure that these types of resumes link to your content creation sources, your GitHub, your Kaggle, what have you. When I overhaul my resume to look for new opportunities, the first thing I usually do is look through five to ten different job openings that I'd be interested in. From here I can see what keywords that they focus on, if there are any themes in the skills that I'd need, and I can cater my resume to that bigger group of job opportunities. I like to see candidates use similar language to the job description. That stands out to me that they're paying attention to the skill set that is needed in that specific role. I would also recommend catering your resumes to specific types of roles. So if you're applying to traditional data scientist roles as well as visualization specialist roles and machine learning engineer roles, you should have three different resumes for those three types of positions. I generally, for the essence of time, would not create a different resume for each opportunity that I apply for. If you'd like to learn more about the different types of data scientist roles, click the link above and it will take you to my video on the differences between those. I would have your LinkedIn pretty closely mirror your traditional resume. It can be a bit more general than that is because you're not catering your LinkedIn to very specific opportunities. For your LinkedIn, though, I would update your personal statement so that it is a reflection of yourself, your work, and the types of opportunities that you're looking to pursue. Again, if you find that the opportunities that you're really interested in don't necessarily match up with your skill set, you should definitely do some projects focused on that area to help you, one, improve your skill set, 
and two, to appear better to these types of roles and to these companies. Getting an interview in data science isn't about the work you've done or what you have on paper. A lot of it is about who you know and how you interact with the people you're communicating with. Step four is all about choosing your communication channel. I recommend rather than strictly applying for job postings on LinkedIn or Glassdoor or any of those websites, you should go through a recruiter a, for a company, a technical recruiter that works with multiple different companies, or through your LinkedIn network, your school network, or your social network. Your school likely has a job portal, and honestly, that's a really good place to start. I personally make a list of the opportunities that I'm interested in and the point of contacts for those opportunities. And as I go through applying, I reach out to those point of contacts with my personal information, my resume, etc. I call step five doing your homework. Before you engage, you reach out to a company or a recruiter. It's important to understand the basics of the company and the role. Find as much as you can about the company through a basic web search, through the company's website, on LinkedIn or on Glassdoor. I find that those are a great way to get a baseline on the values of the company, how big the company is, and what the company does at a, at a high level. I also really recommend doing informal interviews with people that you found through your network. I wouldn't necessarily ask these people for a job, but you can get a really good understanding of what a day in the life of a certain position is like by communicating with these people. Let's say I wanted to make a transition over to a machine learning engineer type role. I would find one of those people in my network and sit with them and ask them about how their general work schedule goes, what their skills are that are really important for their role, and how much they really like their job. With any communication that you have, be it with an informal interview, with a recruiter, or someone in your network, make sure to follow up. An email within a day afterwards, it really means something. It shows that you valued their time, and they're more likely to recommend you if you do this. I also would follow up with something that is specific to your conversation. Say you talked about some, something related to neural nets, bring that up and thank them for their specific insight into that feature. The final step in my process is to actually reach out to these people, but to choose your messaging very carefully. It's really important that you convey a couple very specific things to them. That you're interested in working for, your, for this company, that you can create value for this company, and that you're passionate about the work and the industry. I usually reach out to a recruiter for the company or someone in the HR department, and I'll send a message that has a couple key components. The first is my interest in the company and in the role, something fairly specific about how this role in this company match with my job history or my personal interests. The second thing I look at is the value that I can create for this company and the skill set that I bring that matches with the job description. The last thing I really focus on is how I'm differentiated from other, uh, other potential employees. You want to use specific examples in these communications, but you also don't want to bore them with the, too many details. These should be roughly two to three paragraphs in length and shouldn't take them more than a couple minutes to read. I also think that you should generally attach your resume to these communications. In most circumstances, the recruiter will ask you to apply through the online portal, but you've already made good communication with them and there's a higher chance that your resume will be flagged. If you're referred by a friend, they'll automatically flag your resume and there's generally really good incentives around referrals that increase your opportunities of getting an interview. Your friend who referred you will very likely get a bonus and it looks good for the HR department to uh, cater to some of the existing employees' desires. A final note here is that this process should be fun. I know it might seem like a lot of work. There's a lot of things that I'm recommending that you do, especially related to creating content, but it's fun to create content. You want to be a data scientist because you get to do things like that on a day-to-day -day basis. After you've built out a portfolio, you've already really done a lot of the hard work. You know, you really just have to keep it updated and you have all of this great history and this great story that you can tell about yourself. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.